Hey all, Billy here. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of what the Sprinter looks like before we do anything. So I'm here at Tumalo State Park, uh, just a little bit north of Bend, and I'm gonna give you guys a little quick walkthrough of what the Sprinter looks like stock right from the dealership, besides a couple of tweaks we had the dealers actually handle before we picked it up. So let's go for a little walkthrough. What we ordered was a 170 inch wheelbase Sprinter 2500 4x4 uh, in white. It's a cargo van, but we did get some windows installed from the dealership. They actually did it out to a third party. The dealership in Wilsonville, Oregon, just south of Portland, uh, uses Van Specialties, which is another company in Oregon that does all these modifications. So before we picked it up, we had them put some windows in it, but I'll show you guys that in more detail. Um, so this is what it looks like stock, obviously with a couple of doors open, but we'll go inside and take a closer look and see what we have inside. Just to step up, I will say I haven't measured the clearance yet, but on the 4x4s, it's a quite high step. We didn't think we really wanted to go with Nerf bars, but it's possibly a consideration going forward um, when we'll see what we can figure out with that. So stepping inside, we'll start off with the cockpit first. Honestly, there's not a ton of stuff to go over in, in one of these um, uh, basic models of the Sprinter van. It's not like you would think a uh, luxury vehicle when you think of Mercedes. It's pretty rudimentary when it comes to the cockpit design and features. Uh, we didn't get a lot of things added. There was a couple key features we wanted and honestly, we didn't really have a choice. Um, this van was on its way to the Sprinter dealership when we decided to try and order one and they sold us on this because it would have taken us about 13 months to get a newer one. And the 2019s don't really, they don't, they're gonna change the body style so they don't really know what's gonna be in them so they couldn't even sell me one of those yet. So, Allison and I decided to go with this. It wasn't the color we wanted, but it did have most of the features that we wanted and that's not really a lot. Um, what we did want was the backup camera. So we got a package that includes fog lights, um, the cruise control, navigation and the backup camera are both included in the screen and the only other additional option we got was heated and powered uh, mirrors um, that was kind of a big deal with us for us they weren't they don't come with powered mirrors so these are powered mirrors um, other than that there's not much going on here we did get the high low um, four-wheel drive package that was already coming with this van we wanted that anyway so we have a downhill speed regulation we could turn on if we were on a very steep uh, decline. And um, right here is the uh, switch to turn on the four wheel drive, which you have to do when you're in park. Um, other than that, we have lights. Uh, there's no automatic. It's just turn them on, turn them off. They do have daytime running lights. And then the only other option there is for our fog lights. And then since we got the powered mirrors, we get the switch there for the left and right mirrors. Other than that, there's not much going on here. Um, we have um, just regular standard air conditioning and heating. Um, consider that, considering that this is a worker van, a lot of people ask what this is. That is literally a clip to hold paper. <laughs> like if you were delivering, making deliveries in this van or holding a work order. That goes to show you how much of a work van these really are created for. Um, you can of course get a lot more bells and whistles with these if you look on the website. We decided we didn't need anything more than this to really get us started with this package. The majority of the work and the, the features we want to add are going to happen in the, in the cabin of this area, um, of this van. So up above, uh, not much going on, a little bit of storage above the, uh, the visors. The visors are quite large, they're very nice. They do cover pretty much the whole um, top of the, the windshield in front of the driver and passenger, so that's quite nice. Um, other than that, we just have a reading light, microphones for the Bluetooth, which we do have as well, and uh, a little space to hold some stuff, maybe a pair of sunglasses. Um, we do have cup holder, change holder, cigarette lighter. That's literally a cigarette lighter, and there was an ashtray in here. <laughs> Got rid of that. And then there's another 12 volt plug just below that, so we can plug in some other power. There's also a, just a standard glove box here, really nothing special. But below down here is where you would access the, the jack um, and the tools to change a flat tire. That's all located right here under the floor. Um, simple pop open compartment and everything's loaded in there nice and neatly. That really kind of sums it up as far as the cockpit goes. 
there's really, like I said, not a lot to it. Now, transitioning to the back of the vehicle, the cabin is what I'm calling it kind of, and what's gonna be the camper. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, this Sprinter actually came with walls and a partition, a partition that would have separated the uh, cockpit area and this cargo area. Um, we had them remove that because it, it's actually an added feature that costs money and we really didn't want it. It would have just all been wasted. So they removed the walls and the um, partition for us and that evened out the price. It came to about the same price as it would have been to add a trailer hitch. And I'll show you guys that in a few minutes. But so we, we chose to add the trailer hitch and we can tow uh, 5,000 pounds with this, with this van. Um, so what we have here is basically, um, we have some cables routed uh, through this uh, plastic kind of conduit that runs to the back of the van, which I believe, well, I definitely know it holds all the cabling for all these lights that are in the uh, cargo area. And it also, I believe, holds the cabling for the backup camera. Uh, we're gonna be removing all of that because it's kind of taking up space where we would bolt the wall to the metal. The rest of it is basically just the sheet metal structure of the van. One of the first steps we're gonna be doing is putting rattle trap um, on you know 25% of each one of these panels to get rid of this sound. It's very tinny right now, so by adding that sound dampening material, we're gonna get rid of that sound, uh, especially on the doors and honestly just while driving, and it's gonna help a lot. Underneath our insulation, we'll be putting on the wheel wells. We'll be ripping out this floor. The nice part about this floor is once we rip this out, it's going to be a perfect template for our subfloor. Um, basically, we can just trace this out on some plywood and that'll create our subfloor. So we don't really have to measure that out too well. It's just gonna be, you know, cut and trace, cut and go. Um, so that'll be great. Like I mentioned in the beginning when I showed you guys the outside, we did have the dealership send our van off to Van Specialties um, in Oregon to add these windows in. Uh, we could have cut these out ourselves. As you can see, they're pretty much the perfect shape. They leave it that way. That's where the windows would be installed if they came with windows um, or where you can put a window if you'd like to install yourself. We decided to get this option right from the dealership. We financed it with the, with the van, which is actually a great idea. I really like that. And um, these are CR Lawrence T vent windows. And what they allow us to do is kind of, you twist this knob and we get a little nice venting window here with a screen on it. So we can leave those open once we install the max air fan, which will be installed right up here in the ceiling. Uh, cracking the windows and um, turning on the fan, which should give us pretty good circulation here in the van. Um, looking at it once we received it, there's definitely a possibility we'll throw a couple more windows in the back there, maybe by the bed, some of the small CR Lawrence sliding windows. But um, for now, we're pretty happy with these purchases. We also got one on the slider. Only differences, this one only has one uh, window that opens up. And uh, that's just what they make for the slider on this door. It's actually quite nice because what we plan on doing is getting a door stop that allows the door to stop halfway open and then it would open the rest of the way after that if we chose to. Definitely not automatically like it just did. <laughs> but that's what we plan on doing with that, so that worked out quite well. Uh, they also installed these two rear windows. This is a cargo van, so when you order these vans as a cargo van, they don't come with any windows besides the driver, passenger, and windshield. That's literally it. So we're really happy that we ordered these from the start. I, would, I didn't want to start this project by ordering, by actually cutting holes in the sides of the van this size. I'm going to have to cut a hole in the top um, for the for the Max Air fan, but I'm kind of okay with that. These are massive holes in the van and I kind of wanted to let them do the windows uh, since they're professionals at that. But we're very happy with what Van Specialties did here and how Mercedes-Benz of Wilsonville um, set that up for us and took care of everything from delivery, uh, pickup, and, uh, and basically coordinating all of that. So like I said earlier, we had the walls and the partition removed and that basically set us up to get this trailer hitch for the same price. It was basically a wash. So Van Specialties also took care of this. Uh, it's got full hookup for our brake lights. Uh, it's a two inch hitch. Um, it's rated for uh, 6,000 pounds um, and this van is rated to tow 5,000 pounds. So that should cover us. Uh, also underneath here is the full size spare, which you get to by pulling open these panels here and unscrewing everything and it'll lower down. So yeah, that's the trailer hitch right there. 
This is the driver's side of the van. It's quite a lot of white. <laughs> Still working on that in my head. I did not want a white van, but I did not want to wait 14 months for a van. So here's the white van. But I figure we throw a lot of black on this thing, it's gonna look quite cool. The ladder will be over here for the Illuminous roof rack that'll be on top. And uh, we've already got, we're, we've already uh, planned to get these wheels powder coated and we have some BF Goodridge all-terrain tires coming in uh, next week. So uh, it's gonna help this van look a little more rad because right now it's just a big white beast. Anyway, here's what the CR Lawrence venting T-vent windows look like from the outside. Kind of nice. You, know, you don't want to drive around with them open like that, but they're pretty sweet. They look really nice on the outside and they have a nice tint to them right now. You can see through it because the other door is open. But one funny thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that it took me at least five or six minutes to find where the gas cap is. And I find that quite humorous considering I'm going to be cutting holes in this thing and screwing a lot of things to it. And I assure you, I am mechanically inclined to a pretty good level, but I could not find the gas cap. Almost to the point where I almost took out the manual to look for it. But I'll show you. It's right here next to the driver's side door. This beautiful little panel, once you open the door, gets you to the diesel gas cap. Yeah, and that's that. But I find that quite humorous. I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, one of my many challenges. <laughs> um, but yeah. Another thing to note is that the battery, the uh, starter battery for the car is located under the driver's seat. There is no battery under the hood. Um, uh, they do that, they usually, if you if you get the add-on, you can get an auxiliary battery under the hood. Uh, we did not add that on. We'll be doing our batteries um, uh, standalone in the rear of the vehicle, what we're calling the uh, garage, which will be underneath the bed. Um, so we'll be doing that at a later time. But um, yeah, that's kind of the way this van came. Um, as far as what's under the passenger seat, I believe there's a little panel under there, but we're gonna be installing the uh, S-Bar diesel heater under the passenger seat. Um, to get this van nice and toasty during the winter because we like to ski and do a lot of snowshoeing and a lot of winter activities so we want this baby nice and toasty uh, when we're sleeping in here in the winter. So our van came with the standard steel silver um, uh, wheels for the 4x4 with the black hubcap. That's actually a separate piece um, to that wheel and what we're going to do is have these all four of these powder coated uh, from uh, I believe Northwest Wheel Repair here in Bend, Oregon. Uh, they're gonna powder coat all four of these black for around $400, I believe. And then stock, they came with these Continental Vanco Four Season tires, which are excellent tires. They're really good for the highway, really good for deliveries, um, but not as um, not as tough as we'd like them to be on the sidewall and uh, grippy for off-road and snow travel. So we're gonna be replacing these next week, which is why I wanted to do this video and show you guys uh, all the stock stuff on this van that we have before we start changing everything. Because <laughs> we're gonna be changing a lot. So I wanted to pop the hood and show you guys what's going on in the engine compartment. And when I mentioned earlier that this is a pretty standard vehicle and there's not a lot of bells and whistles and you wouldn't think of it as your typical Mercedes Benz, that stands true for everything inside and has nothing to do with the engine drivetrain uh, on this van. This is where the Mercedes Benz shines. This is the V6 turbo diesel um, for the 2500 um, Sprinter van. Um, this is why we purchased this van. Uh, this engine has been tried and true for quite a few years now, and uh, we expect it to last quite a few years and get many hundreds of thousands of miles out of it, and that's why we went with this van. We wanted this van to last us many years so that when we pour our blood, sweat, that's probably a few tears into this thing and a lot of money, that it will last us quite a long time. So that's, that's what we have there. Um, in here, there's really not much to it either, as far as uh, beauty or what to see. Like I said, there's no battery here. That's the space where the auxiliary battery would be. If you needed to jump start this, you wouldn't have to go under the driver's seat. You could just, that's your positive and your negative. Your ground is right there. So, uh, other than that, brake fluid, windshield washer fluid, uh, DEF, which is diesel exhaust fluid, um, and your oil, which will all be told to us by the uh, computer inside the, the car, inside the cabin. Um, here's the cabin air intake and the engine intake. Other than that, everything else is underneath and it's a beautiful engine. Um, it's got a lot of pep to it, especially now that the van is completely empty and uh, we expect it to last us quite a few years. Hey everybody, it's Allison here. One thing that Billy forgot to mention is this step 
that um, does not come stock with these sprinter vans, uh, but the one that was at the dealership did have this step. So lucky for me because I'm pretty short, um, maybe 5'2", maybe a little bit shorter than that. So it comes in really great for me. It's about 30 inches to step up here uh, without the step. And then uh, by adding it in, it's, it's about two feet. So uh, way more doable. So a feature that I really love, but again, doesn't come stock with the van, but we have it on ours. Okay, to also compare it to the step by the sliding door, um, by getting the, the rear step in the back, it, it makes it um, about equivalent to what it is to step up here. And as you can see, it, it's still kind of a, a big step for me. So really, really great having both of these steps. All right, guys, that pretty much sums it up for the uh, stock sprinter walkthrough. Like I said, I wanted to get out here as quick as possible and show you guys everything with the van, the way we picked it up from the dealership. Um, like I mentioned earlier, those windows back there did not come on the van. We had the dealership install those. So this thing stock wouldn't have any windows in the back or uh, on the sides. But um, other than that, this is exactly the way this, this exact model comes from the dealership before we make any modifications. Uh, again, I want to apologize for the shaky iPhone video right now, but this is the quickest way I can get this done. I wanted to do that because uh, the weather is about to change pretty soon here in Ben. That's a nice thunderstorm rolling in for the next couple days. So before it rained on this guy, uh, I wanted to give you guys a quick walkthrough and show you everything. And I want to get started on making these modifications, start getting that rattle trap in there and add the roof rails and get everything going. But I wanted to show you first. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys. If we missed anything, just leave it in the comments below and uh, see y'all soon. All right. Later.